Spoto, let's stay with the theme of dumb politicians in Canberra and look at the latest today from Lydia Thorpe who has let her mouth, disconnected as it is from her brain, get her into more hot water. Trying to be too clever by half is always a recipe for disaster. And so who can be surprised that Thorpe's brag about never properly affirming her allegiance to the Crown using hairs instead of airs turns out to bite her on the backside. And I swore allegiance to the Queen's hairs. If you listen close enough, it wasn't her airs, it was her hairs that I was uh, um, giving my allegiance to. And now that, you know, they're not, no longer here, I don't know where that stands. Well, not so funny now, because anyone with any sense would know that brag would call into question her legitimacy to sit in the Senate. And that then sent Thorpe into damage control, trying to undo what she said and spin it away as best she could. I'm no, no expert on the, the English language. Um, I read it how I, I read it. You know, I spoke yeah, but, what but, I read. But you know what it means. means. You, you me, allegiance. Well... <laughs> I read the card. It said um, hairs, which, you know, is now, is, is airs. I'm no expert on the English language. That's part of the process of colonisation. Sorry, you, you say you, you, you sit in the Senate and you're in quarter of a million dollars a year, but you don't really understand the English language? Uh, I don't subscribe to the violence of um, what England have done to us, and that includes the language. I left school at 14, mate, you know. I grew up in um, public housing and went to public schools and uh, when I got to the Senate, I simply said hairs instead of airs. Come on, she and I are about the same age. I also went to public schools, private schools as well, but I also went to public schools in the same state as her. I know the difference between airs and airs. But let's just listen, go back and listen to what she said when she was sworn in. True allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Her hairs and successes according to law. She knew what she was saying. Too clever by half is my read of what's happened here. Thorpe thought she could be a smart aleck, make fun of the ceremony to swear her into office and that no one would notice or that somehow it wouldn't matter that she mocked the process. Now, will it get her thrown out of the parliament, as I think a majority of Australians might hope? I suspect not, because she was validly elected and also signed a document on that day in the Senate, as well as saying those words. We'll ask legal expert Chris Merritt later in the show for his verdict on this. But one thing I do know, in four years when she faces the electorate again, at the end of her six-year term, Lydia Thorpe will not be elected not even in the socialist state of Victoria. She will not get the large number of personal under the line votes to keep her in the Senate. So rest assured, she is gone. Question is, can we only hope it'll be sooner than that?